This is Leave Your Mark. I'm Vince Cortez, and today's guest is Todd Collins. Todd is a consultant that teaches above average understanding of the online reputation management industry. He specializes in education on reputation management, social media strategy, sales, and entrepreneurship. Todd, thank you for being my guest here today. Hey, yeah, Vince, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Hi there, and welcome. Now it's time for America's, America's favorite, podcast. favorite podcast. Leave your mark with your host, Vince Cortez. If it's fly, loose fit it. It's Cortez. If freeze and chop is in it, it's Cortez. Leave your mark. It's about inspiring the world. One guess at a time. Pass the word from Brooklyn to Pittsburgh, from urban to suburb. It's Cortez, you heard? And here is our host, Vince Cortez. You've been on here a little while and you're tearing it up. So the idea of a digital marketer, coach, speaker, I mean, your skill set is huge. So what I want to do is share with the audience a little bit about your background, how you came to be, who you are today. So you're born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. Mom and dad, mom, Angel, dad, Tom, and mom was uh, customer support with Black and Decker. And your dad was sales with John Deere. Your sister, Amanda, and you had a very nice childhood in Baltimore, Maryland. And then you're at North Carroll High School. And you're a baseball and soccer standout. And your interests are skating and snowboarding. So you graduate high school and you go on to Towson University as a psychology major. So share with me from this point forward um, where your interests lie. Uh, college is always interesting because we're sticking our toe in the water in the real world. So it, it, it's a little bit of a, a an entry point where it's not quite as hard gun cold turkey. So you're at Towson State and what was the reason to be a psychology major? I mean, it was the closest thing that I could find that I might have slight interest in. Um, I was diagnosed with um, attention deficit disorder when I was in like six, fifth or sixth grade. I think it was sixth grade, actually. And I was always very intrigued on um, the medication that I was given and and how that was handled. And, and back then, I'm 43 now, there wasn't really that much true like scientific education on what was happening with that. And I was always very intrigued by it. Um, and then the other side of it, I remember my dad telling me he was in sales and he, I remember him telling me like, you can all, you can always fall back into sales. Worst case scenario, you know, it's a, it's something that you can, that you can fall back on in a, in a worst case scenario situation. And, um, he said the best sales training you could ever get would be in psychology. And I was like, huh. Okay. So I honestly, I just took his advice and made that my major. And, um, Honestly, I, I dropped out when I was in my sophomore year, in the beginning of my sophomore year. So I didn't even really get into. This is always of, interesting you know. too. So what was the pivot in the, why you decided to drop out? Cause it, these are big decisions. It was a huge decision. I, it, it just wasn't working. Like I, in, in, in that point in time in my, in, in, for the age that I was and the maturity level that I was, it was just the wrong spot for me. It didn't make sense. I, I didn't, I honestly, I felt as if it was the next logical step in my life instead of it was the next logical step um, for myself to take to better myself, get where I wanted to go, things like that. I didn't want to be a psychologist. I didn't want to be, yeah. a, I didn't know what I wanted to be. And I think that was, that was where, you know, I kind of looked myself in the mirror and was like, am I going to waste my parents' money, you know, like I, like you said, we, I grew up great, but they, they didn't have a lot of money and they were scraping that money together and there was, there was scholarships involved. Um, so, you know, um, I wasn't going to waste my parents' money at that point. And it just, I just didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be in class. I wanted to mm. party and hang out with my friends and stuff like that. And so it just, so that was yeah, it. you make the transition. So you're going out in the real world and you get in the car business. What happens there? Yeah. I mean, oddly enough, my dad was like, you got, you have a choice. Cause I was living at home at that point. My dad was like, you have a choice. You can either join the military like I did, um, which was what my dad did. He was in the army for 28 years as well. And then transitioned out uh, into the national guard and his regular job or whatever. And, um, or you can get a job. And I was talking to all my friends and I'm like, looking, this is back, by the way, guys, like I'm 43. This is back when you would look at the newspaper for a job. And <laughs> I, 
saw this course i was thinking i called up my friend and i was like do you think that the guy would be any good at this and he was like dude i really think you would be great at it. he's like people like you like you're, you have like a magnetic personality blah 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 like he, i don't know if he was just pumping me up or whatever and so i went in i applied for the job the guy behind the desk gave me a shot but i remember him specifically saying um he's like dude there's no way you're gonna be good at this he's like i can already tell but he's like but i need people so, you know, whatever it is, my hair was like dyed like blonde. Like, I think I had like a mohawk <laughs> at that point in time, like earrings in, you know, whatever. And um, yeah, I came out the gate uh, my first month. I sold 10 cars my first month. Uh, and then it was just a consistent, like I was consistently selling cars. People were referring me um, and I just took off in the business. Now, th that uh, is a sign there that of things to come so the fact that that came easy to you mm -hmm. was really um a sign of more to come so uh feeding off of that you you mentioned that you kind of climbed the ladder through yeah. the car business so you different levels of management and so how long are you in the car business before the internet bug gets you yeah it was like a fast track so like people that are in the car business know what that means basically like you were fast track there was people that were above you that saw talent levels and were like hey we like the car business is like a fraternity like if you're good like people will grab you and like pull you that are that are higher than you they'll pull you up to their level um to kind of get you where you need to go and the money in that time was very good you would be surprised how much back then you know people in the car business were making i was you know easy six figures in my 20s like it was no, that, that's also too because you were on that cusp coming out in 2005 that we didn't really know what was to come with the education that would be on the internet so right. like we're in this scale measuring where it looks like you made a valuable decision to leave college leave the debt Mm -hmm. and get involved in the work and you're coming out great guns at a six digit salary so i think this is the tipping point really in this and as part of our culture connect with us on linkedin be our friend on facebook follow us on twitter and instagram you are listening to listening to beans cortez we just want you to leave your mic so where you stand now as a digital marketer um Share with me then that car experience working into being the consultant that you are today. Yeah. So uh, this is like kind of like where the transition comes, right? Where I remember being in, this is back when I was like just selling and getting into the finance side. I remember I had an old HP laptop and I had, and, and the car salesman had their, their desk. We had their, our desks lined up back to back with, with each other. And I remember the owner was walking through the dealership one day and I had my laptop open on my desk. <clears throat> and it was open to my back then there was a, there was not a lot of software that you could use from a, there wasn't even customer relationship management software back then there was no crm so i had microsoft office open and i was utilizing microsoft office as a crm for my clients that i was talking to when i would follow up with them notes on when, what we discussed things like that and he was walking past me and he was younger it was this the owner's son but he was a, a bit older than me a little bit younger than his dad and he was like, what, what, what are you doing here? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm logging my customer information and I'm keeping track of the customer. So when I could follow up with them, I remember what we talked about, things like that. And he's, he was, his mind was like blown. And this was just around the time where the internet was starting to become um, popular, but the car business and car salesmen were like, the internet's going to destroy the car business. Like no, nothing's going to happen. This is right on the cusp of 2008 where the market dropped off, everything else like that. He goes and says, I think we should start an internet department. That's what pushed me into the, the digital side of, of everything. I got the internet department built out. I then was like, okay, I've got this done. We're making money here, whatever it is. I want to move into finance. That's when 2008 hit. And I was able to survive through 2008 um, and 2009 and 2010 in the car business and not have any issues. I was, I was absolutely fine. I, was, I guess I was considered a valuable asset to the dealerships. I'm sure. I'm sure that was. Now, looking at where we were, uh, culturally speaking, with that two seven and eight, um, little did we know what was going to become of social media with Facebook leading the charge over the next five years. But you're in prime position with your online education before this movement really strikes. Yeah. So it's like post-2013 and beyond, 
the internet takes a whole nother level. Like, I don't think anybody expected to jump in the e-commerce to go off like it did. So with this going on, you educated thoroughly at this. Now, what becomes of you from like 2015 and, and, and to where you're currently standing? Because this looks like in your resume, this is when the jumps occurred. Yeah, the jump occurs like then at that point, right? So like web two hits, Facebook, uh, you know, starts to become extremely popular. MySpace had like died off, Facebook kind of like took over. Then you, you started seeing transitions out of Yahoo being the major search engine into Google and things like that. And my best friend at the time, who we had been best friends for over 30 years, uh, back then it was probably 20 some years, um, came to me and he had always been like a serial entrepreneur. And when I say serial, I mean like the guy never had a regular job. Like he had always started businesses, created them, made them profitable, sold them. That was his job. Um, and he came to me and he goes, he's like, I, we had always wanted to do something together. And he came to me and he said, I'm doing something right now. It's in the reputation management sector. Give me like three hours of your day one day. And let's, let me just explain to you what I do. And then I have an idea. And he had the idea like written out on this whiteboard. And he was like, this is what I want to do. But he couldn't sell. He cannot, he is socially anxious. He cannot be around people. Like it's, it, he is the opposite of me. He's 180 degrees the opposite, which is probably why we're best friends. And he was like, if you do this, he's like, I can't pay you like anything until we start making a profit. Like, it, it, I mean, this was a major risk. This mm -hmm. was a major, I was walking away from a six figure salary into making like $1,100 a month. Like, mm. right. The, my, the, my girl that I was with at the time was making money. So I was, I could like pull that kind of together and like make that work and kind of glue a couple things together. Um, and I was just like my ADD impulsiveness was just like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, like now I got to do it now because I'm not going to be able to do it when I'm in like my forties or fifties, maybe like I'm going to have more responsibility then. So I got to do it now. So I just did, I jumped with him and I went with him and I went, I mean, hard, like as hard as I, I took everything that I learned in sales from the car business, everything from a psych psychological standpoint of selling, you know, in a, in a quick, in a quick, speedy process, um, developing rapport quickly, all those types of things. I took it all and I put it into this and, um, I just, I bet on the relationships that I built, you know, over time with like restaurants and, and uh, car, other car dealers um, and things like that. I never burned any bridges or anything. And um, I was able network. to close some, yeah, I was able to build some really, really good accounts. And um, and I'm talking like, I walked in the door of places. Like I wasn't picking the phone up. I was walking in and being like, you guys have your, your reviews on AutoTrader, your reviews on cars.com, your reviews on Google, they're just not good. No one's acknowledging these customers. I believe that there's probably money being left on the table. And the minute that a dealer principal or an owner of a restaurant would hear these things, it would immediately pique their interest. And for the minimal amount of money that we were charging for the service and the experience that we had, it was somewhat of an easy sale and an easy close. And to this day, this is now going into 2023, right? Yeah. To this day, all the way back then, I still have clients that are with me from all the way back then. Now, this uh, gentleman that's the serial entrepreneur, it sounds like it's a good combination of personalities with yeah. um, you being outgoing and him being more of the strategic guy. So what was the name of that company? And are you still working with him or you're now? I can't official? name the name of the company. And no, I'm not not working. Okay. With him. And no, okay. we're, not, we're no longer best friends. Um, that ended uh, about two years ago during a dispute of business. I mean, it was a business dispute and there was an agreement of disagreement that uh, either one of us could come to. And, um, you know, that sadly, you know, and then we knew that going in, like, you know, business and friendship is always a tough, it's always a tough connection to kind of there. do. And I didn't, I wasn't scared of it because I didn't think it would happen to us, but it did. And it, again, this was another entrepreneurial business lesson, like leave it out, like no friends. Like it's just family, no family. This is interesting because this ties in now where you're working with Beam Media and mm -hmm. it's women owned. Yeah. Okay. And you're the prime consultant for it. 
And uh, I'm guessing about this period when you left that old relationship, business relationship, this one is what took root next. And uh, you're fantastic. I mean, you've got this thing dialed in. Um, I started watching you on TikTok and I didn't realize it, but I was watching you for probably 25 to 30 minutes at a time instead of 15 seconds. So what you were saying was you were extended play seven seconds after seven seconds on that attention span thing. So to go for 15, 20 minutes, it was like you were, you were speaking really quality content, a lot of value. If you are listening from Australia, Florida, or just from around the corner. From East Coast to West Coast outlets, if you're not into the dirty South straight, make a left body modern. Contact us, leave your mark with your host, Vince Cortez. Share with me some of the ideas or some of your strategy or philosophy about using TikTok, how valuable it is to you moving forward, and then you can touch on Beam Media. Yeah, I mean, using TikTok was kind of like a no-brainer for me. Like, uh, part of my part of my job is to test new things, new apps, especially social media applications when they come out, um, or even when they're slightly in discussion. Um, to test those things and, and try them out and see what they're all about. Just, uh, real quick, what in the way of a test, like how how do you you're just kind of towing the water, or are you mm-hmm. spending advertising dollars on that, or you're sticking with organic? Well, in the beginning, most of the time, you know, as you know, social most social media social media platforms aren't going to put any are, are going to give you the uh, the option to 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 um do advertising or anything else like that in the very beginning, right? Because they're trying to get users. And everything, mm-hmm. and then once they have a specific amount of users, when they'll start to monetize and try to you know get those ad dollars out of either businesses or or people that are trying to 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 garner more awareness for for themselves or the brand that they're representing. So, um, I started on t- I had a TikTok username. My TikTok username is rolled over from Musically, so I was already testing Musically um, before it became TikTok. Now, during during COVID is when TikTok really started to just just take off for everybody, and I was already there, so I wasn't seeing any real growth there until then. And the only reason I was seeing growth was because people were finally starting to see my stuff because they were finally starting to go there. It wasn't like I was already big there; like it was like they they had to they, other people had to join, and then they found my stuff based on that. And I always pushed. If you go way back and look at my content, like I, I it just kept getting better and better mm-hmm. and better and better. And I just kept going. I just kept pushing the envelope on how far we could take it from a production standpoint to an editing standpoint and everything else. If you go back and watch the beginning ones, they were awful. <laughs> just, and I, because I was putting, you had to remember Vince, I was putting out content that did not make sense for that platform. And for the type of content that was successful in there, I wasn't putting out that type of content, but I knew I did inkling in my head. I had a, I don't know what it was, but I was like, this type of content is going to make sense at some point on this platform. Well, you got um, a really good intuitive because the idea of you being poised in these positions at different times of the intervals of involvement or evolution, you're, you're standing there again. So um, share with me, some of the tips that you would give for somebody say that would want to start a business and do it on TikTok. What what would you tell them? You know, I feel like I say the same things over and over again, but I also feel like I say, I, I feel like some people say what I say, but I, I just want to kind of put it into a little bit more detail. So like, obviously the first thing is like, if you're going to do it, like give yourself an extended period of time to really do it. So don't tell me like, Hey, we'll try it, but try it for three months thing. Like that's a red flag that you're not even, you're not ready. Um, when, when you say to me, I'm going to put a good 12 months every day into this to, to see if this will work for me. That's when I know that you've got some sort of commitment um, in place where you're like, okay, I'm really going to do this. And you're serious about it. So my biggest thing would be, don't put too much pressure on yourself, but you got to for real go like every single day consistently putting out content um, and making sure that the content is something that you would watch yourself. Mm-hmm. And and that is where a majority of us screw up. So like some people will, will you know, they'll, they'll put out content and be like, 
but I put so much time into editing and it looks so good and da, 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 and I'm like, that doesn't matter. I said, would, would you watch that? Like, would you follow yourself if you weren't you? And that really gets them to start to think. And I'm like, see, you're thinking about the editing and you're start you're thinking about this and what your profile looks like. And if the colors match up, I said, dude, nobody's looking at that. Nobody worries about that part. I've said it a million times. I'm like, no one looks at your, your Instagram profile or your TikTok profile more than you. Yeah. No. Now on the TikTok, how many posts a day or a week do, do you recommend? I, this is what I always say to people more than zero. <laughs> Because there's no like, there's no like magic number, right? I mean, you will hear that from, again, this is coming from people that may have utilized the strategy at some point and they got a slight bit of notoriety for it. They use that strategy and they're just assumption, their straight assumption is like, well, this works. Post three times a day, post four times a day, post seven times a day, post one time a day. I'm like, if you can get more than zero out a day, you're good. Okay. And I think that relieves the pressure and the stress from when you hear someone say, you got to post three, three times a day on TikTok to be successful or three times a day on Instagram reels to be successful, or you're going to fail. That is that, that is a scare tactic. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. So this is an entry point, which you're well beyond. So because you provide so much value for people and like myself, I was experiencing that. Um, people are expecting to hear from you daily. They, they have a routine of Todd's my guy. Um, I could be stuck. I'm at a point where he's been beyond. So you're kind of leaned in on at this point because you're next level up. You're not a starter. You're an authority in the category. So how do you approach what you're doing now? So now, right, like you, like I just told you, I feel like I, I repeat myself quite often, right? Like, I feel like I do that. And so to, to battle that, because I was hearing it myself and I'm like, who the hell wants to hear this guy repeat himself every single day and saying the same thing over and over again. I got it, Todd, like, you know, give me something new. And so what I started doing is I start like, I, I, everything that I do now, just so you know, is like the consulting and the seminars and all that. I didn't go out looking for that people what people came to me and asked me and I was like, Oh, well then I should probably do this. Yeah. I didn't like actively go out and go, well, I'm starting, I'm going to start doing consulting and I want to go speak. Well, you have me as a speaker. It didn't work like that. Like people just asked and I was like, Oh, okay. You know? And, um, I was, I found that if I started documenting all these conversations that I'm getting different questions, I'm getting different types of questions. And I'm also saying things that I typically wouldn't say if I was just launched in front of the camera talking to somebody and saying, hey, look, this is what you need to do to be successful online. So it's been more now like documenting all those things. And then my team goes in and uh, timestamps and edits. Okay. So you get a team of helpers going. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you have a story to share, tell us. How are you going to leave your mark? Contact us. Leave your mark with our host, Vince Cortez. Be our guest. All right. Well, then I have another question for you. So when you've been ahead of the curve on this on the internet, really since, you know, 2005, how do you see the general public catching up? Because you just mentioned that you feel like you have to repeat yourself. And there is no owner's manual or instruction guide for someone who wants to go on the internet and monetize. So uh, seeing that curve happen, say from 2005 to 13, then 2013 to 2017 to now where we stand, how long do you think it takes the general public to kind of catch up to somebody like yourself and the content and the value you're providing. It's not up to me. It's not up to the person who's putting up the content. It's up to the community that's consuming the content to decide if that person gets there faster or, or doesn't get there at all. So being that it depends on the individual. So as a whole, as a, say like the United States where that we've got a seven second attention span and we've got a level of fifth grade understanding. So how long do you think it takes to evolve to the next step or are these things getting shorter and shorter, you know, instead of three years, it's happening in 18 months, like that kind of thing. To do it now, I think it's going to take another, another the launch of another application to get to that speed. Um, 
you, there was a look here's the deal there was a lot of opportunity on instagram in the first three four years of instagram there was a lot of opportunity on tiktok in the first you know three four, two three four years of tiktok a year ago or two years ago i would have said hey you know the boat hasn't left the port yet you're still good you still have time to really you know grow fast on here now i would say with the amount of users that are on here with the amount of long form video the the, the stream the game streaming the uh seriousness of live video all that stuff you know i'm not going to blow smoke up someone's ass and say hey look you can get there in three months or eight okay. months or, yeah it's just not it's just yeah, not yeah. the case it's just like youtube now it's yeah it's, if you're good if and if the community thinks you're good and you're really doing well and you're really putting out either really good entertaining content really um controversial content really um educational content that the masses align with, then you'll get there faster. But here's the the the, the sad truth about it, right? Um, average is the masses. The average person just is not going to get there, mm -hmm. and they're not and they're not going to get there because of just that. Majority of the time, it's just that your content's just not that good. Mm. You're not giving that much value. You're not that entertaining. You're you're just not there. And I hate to say that, but that's that is the true, absolute truth. In fact, I want to ask you then now yourself how you've kind of had a good intuitive to to cut through all of this. What what do you see next for you? I had a lot of success with the the live video when I started going live, and this is something that people should, will probably get a lot of value out of. When I had the ability to start going live on TikTok, that's when I started to see things really start to pick up. Um, and it was in not like the infancy stages of live, but it was like, it was like when live just started kind of being a thing on, on TikTok. And I, I went really hard. When I say really hard, I went every single night from 9 PM to 10 PM for six months straight. So if you're going to do something like that, you got to dedicate yourself to it so you can learn more about it. So you can change things that you feel aren't working or maybe will, will work and things like that. I learned, Hey, look, it's good for me to have music playing in the background. Hey, look, it's good for me to have some transitional lighting there. Hey, um, it's good for, it's good for me to schedule those lives. So people know when to show up. A lot of people mm -hmm. I'll talk to that want to go live. They'll say, I'm like, when do you go live? And they'll like, whenever I feel like it. And I'm like, well, what if your favorite TV show came on and said, Hey, I'm, we're going to come on TV. We want you to watch us, but we don't know when we're going to be on. We just want you to just be standing in front of the television waiting. The ratings would be, would be awful. Right. So you, you've got, there has to be that like understanding and communication with them. As far as what I see next, I started doing some stuff with TikTok. Like I started doing things with the, the, the TikTok small business team and, and helping educate other small business owners on, on, you know, things that they can do to grow um, and do well. Um, but I think it's just going to be, it's just going to be on the trend, the trajectory that I'm currently on, where I'm, I'm speaking to more people. Now, more people are, are coming into the consulting side of the business. Um, and I think those experiences just lead up the ladder, right? I think they just continue to lead up that ladder. I don't know I what's going to get better. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm very happy, man. I'm like super happy with yeah. my life. It's hard you for me to tell. go, what's next, you know? It's no, like, your whole energy is you're in your comfort zone. You're just, yeah. you're, you're hitting on all. So that being said, um, how would you like to leave your mark? My mark is going to be left in a different way. I hope that the content, the, what I like about where we are in this world right now is that we have the ability to make content every day and leave it. And it'll be there forever if it's not taken down by someone. And I like, this is the most interesting fact about this. One of the main reasons that keeps me like driven to make content every single day is that I have four kids and the fact that they're all into things digital um, and that no matter what, they're going to be able to look back when I'm gone and even my grandkids, my great grandkids and whatever it is, they'll be able to go back and watch this whole thing play out. And I think that's something that we've never we've never been able to do. We probably yeah. have great memories of our grandparents and, and maybe slight memories of our great grandparents, but we we always would love to know more. Um, and I think the cool thing is that they'll be able to go back and rewatch some of these things. Not every time am I talking about marketing. There's times where I'm talking about like my history and things that I did and choices that I made in life and why I decided to do this. And 
maybe that impresses one one somebody that in my family hasn't even been born yet and mm. leads them to the next you know the next step to take it or take it to the next level so that's that's i guess that's kind of where i want to leave my mark is that anybody can do it and that my family that's not even here yet will be able to look back and be like wow you know like that was my great grandfather that's really really cool he like really he did that you know well i think the other thing too is is the, beyond the legacy part um we're not in our culture really given the opportunity to learn about money. But one yeah, of the things that's that right. popular about money is compound interest. When people learn about compound interest, all of a sudden their head kind of screws on a little different. And the content that you're referencing, because it's there forever, that has a compound interest type of fact. So, I mean, you could possibly, you know, you hear somebody will their company to their to their children or, you know, and so on to the generations to come. But what you're doing is incredible. I want to thank you for coming on. Um, uh, you get a lot of value, but I like your intensity, too. I can feel you besides hear you. Thanks for listening to Leave Your Mark today. Tune into our next episode of Leave Your Mark with Vince Cortez. Be blessed. You just left your mark. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Listen to more episodes on demand. Just click leave your mark with Vince Cortez. <laughs>